Adobe or Salesforce? Which is a better stock for your portfolio? These both companies are behemoths in the software space. And why I love software business is because it is a very high margin business. Unlike your semiconductors, electric vehicles, product companies, where they have to manufacture products and there's a lot of supply chain issues, dependency on a lot of other requirements and products and raw materials. Software companies, on the other hand, they spend money on building the product. And once that product is adopted by the market and the consumers, it's all about scaling. So their cost of operations is always lower versus the revenue that comes in. So that's the reason I love SaaS companies. There are hundreds of SaaS companies out there, but not all of them are like Adobe and Salesforce. So in today's video, we are going to do a comparison between the Salesforce and Adobe. We'll first start off with the price action for Salesforce and Adobe. Then we'll jump into the financials. We'll then take a look at the price targets for both of these companies. And then we'll do a technical analysis to see if this is the right time to buy one of these stocks. And if yes, which one? And lastly, I will give you my take on which of these companies I'm planning to look to add to my long-term portfolio. So if that is something that you find interesting and you think your friends will find it interesting, make sure you share it with them. Give us a like and without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start off with understanding what these softwares do primarily. Now, most of you heard, I'm pretty sure have heard about Adobe because Adobe is a software that is used by both enterprise and common people. Adobe is primarily known for its creative softwares like Photoshop, PDF, Adobe Illustrator, and these products have become an industry leader in digital media and marketing software. Salesforce, on the other hand, is an enterprise-based solution, and they basically dominate the CRM space, basically giving companies a one-stop shop for their sales, marketing, operations, and everything else in between. They have also acquired a lot of other companies like Slack, for example, which is used as an enterprise messaging tool. They have a lot of other tools within their ecosystem and Salesforce has become a behemoth and an ecosystem in itself. At the time of this recording, Adobe is trading at $500.44 and in the last one year, the stock is up 30%. Year to date, the stock has performed also very well and it is up 48.59%. Salesforce, on the other hand, is trading at $219. They are up 25.93% or 26% in the last one year. And year to date, the stock is up almost 63%. So based on the year to date performance, Salesforce has done much, much better than Adobe. The market cap for both these companies, Adobe is 226 billion and CRM is 207. CRM is Salesforce. And they are pretty much even out in a market cap standpoint. The number of employees are 29,000 plus employees at Adobe, whereas it is over 79,000 employees at CRM, which clearly shows that from an employee perspective, Salesforce employs a lot more employees compared to Adobe. Jumping into the financials, I want to first go over their quarterly income statement side by side, and this is gonna help us to understand the stock a little bit better. From a revenue standpoint, on a quarterly basis, Adobe brings about $4.8 billion, whereas CRM or Salesforce quarterly basis, they bring about $8.2 billion. Both of these companies are bringing revenues in billions of dollars. However, this is the point where they kind of split ways where the cost of revenue for Adobe is only 572 million, whereas it takes 2.1 billion to generate about 8.2 billion for Salesforce, which gives Adobe 4.2 billion in gross profit and 6.1 billion for Salesforce. So just from this metric, I can say Adobe is at a much better place because their cost of revenue is much lower. Now, for a software company, R&D investment is very, very important because you need to continue to build more features and come up with new products to your existing product line. Looking at the Adobe side, the R&D expense is about $876 million, which is up from the previous quarter of $827 million. On the CRM side, however, two quarters ago, the R&D expense was one 1.2 billion dollars but it dropped the previous quarter to 1.1 billion dollars and now it is back up to 
1.2 billion. This again shows that Adobe is a much more mature software in this space as opposed to Salesforce. And net income is where this sets apart completely for us. Adobe is 1.2 billion in net income on a quarterly basis, whereas it is only 199 million for Salesforce in the CRM space. So in this section of income statement comparison, Adobe was able to win against Salesforce. Next up is the comparison between the balance sheet where we look at the assets versus liabilities. On the liability side, the current liabilities for Adobe is about $8 billion. So with their current assets of 9.2 billion and their current liability of 8 billion, they are still in a surplus of $1 billion. The current liabilities for Salesforce is about $21.6 billion. And if you look at the current assets, they are $21.9 billion in current assets. So pretty much cancels itself out with only about 200 to 300 million in spare change. So when you do this whole comparison of current assets versus current liabilities, Adobe wins that battle again. Looking at the long-term liabilities, the total liability for Adobe is $13 billion and their long-term asset is about $27 billion. So that is almost $14 billion in surplus in the total assets. The long-term liability is $36 billion for Salesforce, whereas their total long-term assets is 93. So by a wide margin, they have a lot of assets from a long-term standpoint. So Salesforce wins the long-term asset comparison. Let's jump into the earnings comparison. On the latest quarter, which was reported for Adobe on 6.15, Adobe's EPS for normalized actual was 3.91 and they beat it by 12 cents. Their revenue was actual was 4.82 billion and they beat the expectation by 43 million dollars. On the Salesforce side, they reported their last earning on end of May, their EPS was 1.69, they beat it by 0.08 cents. Their revenue was 8.25 and they beat the revenue by $71 million. In the upcoming earning for Adobe, which is going to be around the mid-September timeframe, they're expecting the EPS to be at 3.98, a so little bit higher than the previous one, previous quarter. The revenue is going to be around the same mark of $4.87 billion. The upcoming earning will be somewhere late August for Salesforce. You're looking at an EPS of 190 and a revenue estimate, which is slightly higher for next was about $8.53 billion. What I really love about both these companies and in the EPS surprise and estimate, they both have been beating their estimates in the last few quarters. And that is a wonderful sign to see, especially from software companies of this size. Now, when we are looking at the earnings, it is always important to go back and check at the earnings history from the last many, many quarters to see how is the trend. On the Adobe side, we don't see a single miss on the EPS side, but we have seen a couple of misses revenue standpoint. On the other side with CRM, this is like an amazing record where they have not missed a single EPS and not missed a single revenue since 2018 in the earnings report. So between just the earnings history, the crown will go to Salesforce over here. We know about the earnings history. What about the earnings projection? Because now if you're going to invest in the company, you want to know how are we projecting down the road, three, four years down the road for these softwares. Many of the investors, they have their built their own model or own spreadsheet to estimate and forecast the future projection. All of that is basically based on a lot of assumptions that are used within those model. We are going to use the Seeking Alpha projection. I'm going to only take the next three years. The reason is because once you go beyond two to three years, especially for a software company, the estimate gets very murky. So for the first year, we are expected to have a year over year growth on the Adobe side for 9.80 versus on Salesforce side, they are expecting about 10.51%. For year two, you have a growth rate of 12% on Adobe and 10.8% on Salesforce. The third year is about 12.26% for Adobe and 11% for Salesforce. And because of their earnings history where they always beat their expectation, it is safe to assume that at the bare minimum, you will get to 10 to 11% growth every single year for the next three years. Both of these companies have a buy rating from Wall Street analysts. There are 37 analysts covering Adobe and about 48 analysts covering Salesforce. So almost 11 analysts, more analysts on Salesforce side. You have about 15 strong buy, six buy and 16 hold on Adobe. And you have 22 strong buy, 11 buy, 14 hold and one sell on CRM. Now, based on the current price today, the average price target for Adobe is about $522. 
with higher side of $600 and lower side of $381, which gives you an upside of about 4.3% from here onwards. If you look at Salesforce, you're looking at about 9% upside because the average price would be about 240 and the high can be 325, low would be 153. Metric itself seems like Salesforce has a much better ROI for an investor. Now we understand that these are estimates from the analyst, but let's look at the previous history to predict how far analysts have been in their prediction. So looking at these two charts side by side, left is Adobe, right is Salesforce. Since around the 2019, the price target and the actual were pretty in line. But after 2022, the price targets are often much higher versus how the stock price has behaved, especially from the late 2021 all the way heading towards the uh, late of 2022. And now we are kind of seeing the price target and the stock price for Adobe pretty much coming in line. On the Salesforce side, we have seen a clear distinction that the price targets are much higher than always the actual price. We see this massive delta between your price target, which is always on the higher side, and it's only few times the current stock price has actually surpassed or met the price target. Just from this graph, what it shows me that the estimates from the analyst are a little bit more optimistic on Salesforce as opposed to Adobe. And that's why you see this much of a big delta. So sometimes the stock doesn't move as much as the analysts have predicted to move. So keep that in mind. And just between these two, analysts are much better to estimate the stock price movement of Adobe as compared to Salesforce. Jumping on to the technical analysis, because this is very important for me, especially if I'm doing a stock analysis, I need to see where the stock is from a technical perspective and then only make a determination if I want to buy the stock or not. Starting off with Adobe, this is a weekly chart. And one of the things that really pops up is the stock was trading its all time low or pretty low around the October. October, September, October of last year. The stock has really ran up around the May, June time frame, And this is because most of the stocks ran between the May and June time frame. Because the stock has run up so much. And if you look at the price targets of these companies, stock price, how different the delta is. At these levels, these are elevated levels for the stock. The 20 day moving average is 406. The 50 day moving average is 368. The 200 day is 435. 30 day EMA is 407. The stock is trading at $500. So is this stock a buy at these levels? Absolutely not for a long term. Is you would want to see the stock stabilize. The volume on the other hand, unlike some of these other stocks that we generally talk about on this channel like SoFi, Apple, Tesla, they have a lot of volume. For a software company like Adobe, the volume is only 17.7 million. Not bad. And the volume is on the decline. That is very, very important to note because as the quarter two ends, quarter three starts for a lot of companies, are they going to be buying more software? There was a lot of hold on the spending by enterprise companies. And these softwares are not cheap. They are expensive softwares to deal with. So at these elevated levels, when your RSI is at 70, am I going to buy Adobe? Absolutely not. I would want to target Adobe around the 50 day moving average, which is about the $368 is something that I'm willing to get into Adobe if the stock falls. If not, then I will not be able to touch Adobe at these higher elevated levels. Jumping on to Salesforce ticker symbol CR. What really pops out on this one that the current stock price is above its 200 day moving average, 50 day moving average and 20 day moving average. It is also above its 30 day exponential moving averages. So it's definitely in a very bullish momentum. We are starting to see that there is a clear resistance at $218 for Salesforce. The Salesforce on the weekly has tried to break this level, but it has always been rejected. At least from the last five, six weeks, they are trading below the $200 and $18 mark. We see a similar issue like Adobe, the RSI is around 70 and the volume is declining. So that is a very interesting sign. For a long term perspective, I would target the $173 at these levels that will bring me around the 24 25% on the Fibonacci level. And that is a good price for me to enter because there will be a lot of room for the stock to run in the future, especially with a 10 to 11% growth every single year. Now before I give you my take on which of these softwares I want to own for the long term, I want to first talk about a couple things that you should keep in mind when you're investing. Number one, that you have to pay attention to the financials of the company. That is 100% true. However, I highly recommend that you 
try to understand the products that they have and which users are using these products. For a software company, it is much easier for retail investors to do the research and you will be able to understand what these softwares do. They are not very complex softwares. They are used and there's a lot of information out there. You can even go to YouTube and you can probably find there are channels dedicated to Adobe. There are channels dedicated to Salesforce. They will walk you through all the different products and services they have. There's a lot of research report. I highly recommend if you want to invest in these companies, definitely do those researches. Numbers are one thing. Technical analysis is another thing. But your research and the general understanding of the company is very, very important. Now, for me personally, in the long term, I like Adobe as a software much more than CRM and I'll tell you why. The reason is because Adobe is used both by the enterprise and regular people. CRM is a pure enterprise based solution. So CRM's revenue really comes from enterprise whereas Adobe products for C for enterprise as well as for normal people like us. Now both of these stocks they trade at a pretty decent value. You have $200 plus for CRM and $500 for Adobe. They are expensive stocks. They are not cheap and that's the reason as you understand the growth rate of these software in the next coming two to three years, it is important for you to make a determination which software do you want to own in your long-term portfolio. For me to enter Adobe at some point in time when it hits my price target to start building the position out. As always, never invest all your money in one go. Always open positions in tranches and build upon that position with tranches. So let me know which of these softwares do you want to own. And if you have any other requests for any other software comparison, let me know in the comments as well. Hopefully you enjoyed today's session. And if you did, make sure you hit the like click on subscribe and ring the bell notification i will see you next time investor family but don't forget to invest for tomorrow